why do you think it's it's important for us to to unravel this historical aspect what is the you know importance beyond the fact that this is highly interesting of, mm -hmm. of course obviously but as you say because you referred to again the we're you know approaching or are into the the, the cusp or the virgin to the uh, Aquarian age mm -hmm. and so forth 2012 and all this um, how much part of, of, of you know trying to figure out what the heck has been happening in the past is an important aspect to what is going to happen in the future well you see because people um, have no future unless they have roots the whole question of a future is immediately obliterated if you don't have a past if you even if you really look at this metaphysically speaking in order to have a road so you don't plunge off into the an abyss you have to have a road that started somewhere and it's going somewhere yeah so the idea that you can inherit the future unless you know where you come from is utterly meaningless you shouldn't be attached to the past and be you know pathologically or psychologically emotionally you know sort of arrested in the past that's wrong but you must allow yourself a vista when a man climbs a mountain a very strange thing happens as he climbs it gets harder now say you never climbed a mountain before and you don't know anything about it as you start climbing this mountain and given that you have a pack on your back which is called life as you start to climb you start to discover it's getting harder and harder as the further you go up it's getting harder steeper so it's all harder on your body mm -hmm. and it's also the air is getting thinner so it's even hard on your lungs mm. So it gets more difficult. Plus, it's getting colder, and it might even be getting darker. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right? And it's getting lonelier. Ooh. That's not to get <laughs> that one, right? So as you climb and climb and climb, but one thing the gods are showing you, your vision of the landscape is getting broader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So even though that job, the task is harder, mm. your vision of the panoply that's laid out in front of you, ergo the landscape, the uh, view is much better mm. the higher you go that's right so something no no remember there's two types of people there's people who focus on this as a bugger i'm out of here mm. and they go back and when you're done at the bottom of the mountain you walk on flat ground and it's very relaxing and easy but how much vision do you have of mm. the world in which you live that's right you can't see past the next house that's right then you get the other character who realizes this is agony but wow look at the view right mm. I got to continue because I'm seeing more and I'm going higher up and higher up and higher up until you get to the peak and at that point you have ecstasy because at a peak what happens you see the road down ahead or the road on the other side of the mountain and you also see the past mm -hmm. so my work is about that true historical revisionism is one of the most important of all subjects mm -hmm. when you study history you're not studying history you're studying yourself mm. man studies himself when he studies history interesting yeah. you also study the greatest man of history mm -hmm. see I really mean it when my sole motive uh, you didn't ask it but others have asked it why are you bothering with this is because I really do have one motive only and that is to bring back the teachings of Commons Bowman and Connor McDary and Anna Wilkes and Ignatius Donnelly back to the world mm -hmm. that's it I've always been interested in the subject as a hobby, mm -hmm. you know, and I haven't really discussed it with a lot of people in my private life, but this has always been a very great interest to me. Mm -hmm. Now I got the opportunity to write about it. My sole and major concern is to bring the Emanuel Velikovsky's, you see, the teachings of what I consider great men, back to the people of the world. Yeah. If you don't, they're buried in nameless graves, Henrik, yeah. and I will not permit that. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I will die before I'll permit that. Mm -hmm because I want to see people in graves but they're the ones who are the deceivers hmm. the teachers of light of any age of any time we owe it to our ancestors even if they're only ideological ancestors mm -hmm. to raise their monuments again just in exactly the same way that you bring a wreath of flowers to a grave of a departed and a loved one hmm. that is what I'm doing on a macro level hmm. I honor these people for their studies and for their their greatness and for their bravery because I believe that intellectual courage you know the courage of a Mikhail, Mikhail Bakunin of a Paul Robeson you know, um, of, uh, of of a lot of, the, of of people that have fallen. You know, in the name of truth, and the, the list is very long. Giordano Bruno jumps to mm -hmm. mind, you see, mm -hmm. and many others. I believe that these people should be celebrated, mm -hmm. the, and in, and because they were intellectually free, mm -hmm. and the intellectually free are the Arya. So, could we draw a reference? I don't know if that's you know. Uh, 
not not proper in this aspect to that sense but but look at you know Galileo for example I mean yeah. he after a long time I mean uh, there were recognition there so to speak do you think that we will take that long long time here also or could we do this quicker it doesn't so matter though it doesn't you see the trans right, the yeah. transmission of truth does not work in time anyway that's right yeah uh, you can have people who are blinded their whole life suddenly getting it and you got people who've given this who are given this information on a silver platter mm. who never get it mm. And who don't want to ever get it. Hmm. So this movement is really something out of time. Yeah, it takes a bit of time. You know, there's a drag factor in the sense that we weren't taught this in school. Sure. And yes, we got to read and we got to pick up the slack on our own time. Hmm. But look, let's look at the positive side of that too. You are your own teacher. You're That's discovering right. your own light. And you are being informed about the great people, the Thomas Taylors, you know, the uh, Alvin Boyd Coons, the Gerald Masseys. Mm -hmm. To me, there is no greater uh, pleasure. These are my friends. <laughs> These are my friends. These are these are the people who are teaching me. Mm. They're not the people who are deceiving me that I'm surrounded by in this world, a sick world that's going to hell in a handbasket. We have people of the past, you know, in the same way that you go to a gallery to look at Leonardo da Vinci. Mm. But a real answer to your question is, you see, the aria is not something about the past. Yes, it would be a lesson in history. And I've said in many radio shows before, many talks, that I'm actually really not that interested in history to tell you the mm -hmm, truth, mm -hmm. even though I write about it a lot. Sure. People go, Atlanta, so what's it got to do with us? I'll tell you what it's got to do with us is because you're living in the same times again. History repeats itself. Mm, right. I am less interested in the aria of old as the aria that are here today. Mm. <laughs> we have the exact same conflict now as we have back then. Mm. It's just different uh, rings, mm. different arenas, different circuses. You play out the same game. But you got to know what has been going on in order right, to because you know, you learn what's from that. the game. You, know? <laughs> you learn from that. Yeah. We learn about the Romans. What are they all about? We learn about the Atmists. Remember we were talking about Egypt and Maspero. Not Maspero, but Manetho, riding hundreds of years, mm -hmm. thousands of years after the events have happened. Mm -hmm. Do you know that most of what people know about Egypt today is only focused on the 18th dynasty? Mm -hmm. There's actually a sort of a conspiracy in the media and also in history to get you to only focus on history, on Egypt of the 18th dynasty. Yeah. They don't want you to know even what happened before that. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about people, hey, hey, do you know anything about Egypt? Oh, yeah, Tutankhamun, King Tut, <laughs> sure. you know, Akhenaten. Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah. only that? You don't know about, uh, you know, the pharaohs of old, these incredible pharaohs of old mm. before that period of time. Yeah. Or you don't know about the female pharaohs, mm. these amazing female pharaohs, you know, and you don't know about the Hyksos. Mm. You don't know about, if you don't know about the Hyksos, you don't know about the history of the world. <laughs> yeah. So we are still fighting these same people. They haven't gone away. That's right. I am not, I, I am not a person who is an academic. I am not a person who is, uh, you know, writing books <clears throat> on dry history. I'm writing manuals for war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, people who read the, my books know, know that. Mm -hmm. that we, are in a, we are not uh, free from these people. Right. We are under attack. We are uh, in a situation where the deceivers of the of nations mm -hmm. are absolutely still around in power. Sure. And our physical lives, our mental lives, every aspect of our lives is being is exactly in the same way as a feudal lord mm -hmm. directed to the serfs. Sure. Now, what was a serf? Let's remind ourselves. A guy that worked his whole life out and he didn't own a damn thing. Mm. A guy that if he got on a horse and tried to leave his village mm. and went five or ten miles, he could be hunted down and killed. Mm. A guy that if he wanted to marry, he and his potential wife, bride, had to come get down on their knees in front of the Lord. Not Lord God, but the Lord. It was a feudal rite, mm. by the way. And they put their hands together in the way that Christians put their hands together for prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many people know that? How many Christians know that when you put your hands together in the famous prayer symbol, that that had nothing to do with Christianity? Hmm. That was a feudal symbol that you put, you got down on your knees like a slave. Mm -hmm. You put your hands together and the Lord tied a leather thong around your hands hmm. and said, you are my bond man and I bond you to this woman hmm. by the ring or the leather cord. Mm -hmm. And it's all fancy now where they put the nice, you know, nice ribbon over you. Sure. That was a, a, the Lord said, I think, okay, I think I'll give you permission. Mm. And you're going to get this, Henrik. If the if the if if you came in front of the Lord and he didn't really like you for mm. some reason, mm. he could actually take your bride and rape that bride really? officially, Sheesh. him and his men, before you got her for mm. your honeymoon the next day. <laughs> That's right. If he felt like it, just to show you who was boss, mm. if you had ever rubbed him up the wrong way before. This was going on until very recent times. So when I see people mm. on their knees with their hands together worshiping the Lord, mm. History tells you where that all really comes from. I don't want a Lord, you see, that puts me in servitude. I don't want a Lord that's telling me there's a secret knowledge, Michael. Mm. Join us. Here, here's the funny sign. You know, you, you have to become a member of the temple. And, I even, and we're not even talking masonry here. We're sure. talking fraternities. We're yeah. talking all that shebang from schools and colleges and all that nonsense, even yeah. at work. Yeah. 
And they're going, look, look, you're an ignoramus. You have no ability to learn anything, but we'll give it. It's all laid on the plate. You're mm -hmm. going to have political status. You're going to have you know, religious status. You're going to have money. You just follow along with what we have set. Mm -hmm. And we got God at the top here, and we got us in the between, and we're the ministers of God. We control your life, and we ask you to jump through all these hoops. You have no freedom of expression. You have no freedom of mind. You know, why do I want a future, Henrik, if it's going to be like that? Mm -hmm. That's right. There is a future, but the future is not made yet. We make the future as we step into it. That is right. That in is fact, right. metaphysically speaking, it's quite interesting because we inherit the future exactly at the same moment as every atom does. Hmm. There is no, there is no future for the, for ever, even the most smallest particle of matter is entering the future as we do. Mm -hmm. We're all on the precipice together, yeah, moving right. into the, the past. We all have. Yeah. And the past even goes back further than you or my lifetime. Obviously, it stretches back into the history of time. Mm -hmm. But the future is absolutely egalitarian. It's what you or the dog or the atom makes of it. We all inherit the void at exactly at the same moment. We're on the edge. Right, on the edge. We're right, like the fool card. The, in fact, the first card of the tarot shows you this. Yeah. That your oh, walking yes. right, right. Yeah, makes the future. Yeah. But so does every other atom. There's no more uh, stability for the atom, for the molecule, for the cells of your body. Step. None of them have more of a guarantee than you do. <laughs> Nothing does. Yeah. So I believe that if you're stepping into the future, and if you are trying to evolve towards a sane, hygienic, you see, rational, creative, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which philosophical people and, and uh, humanitarian people are wanting for the future, it is imperative to have that vista that I talked about the mountain climber. Mm -hmm. If you're happy down in the valley walking on a horizontal plane, well, shit, past doesn't matter, future mm -hmm. don't matter, there you are. Perfect. <laughs> right. But if you're yeah. an, a person who's vertical, if you're climbing the mountain, if you are seeking the truth mm -hmm. in whatever way, truth of yourself ultimately because you are the area every person is potentially that area that person halfway up the mountain gets involved in all these you know disputes about whether the black should get it or the white should get it or the chinese should get it or the pygmy should get it or the guy who's you know six foot tall should get it or mm. you know we have all of these debates and and matriculations mm. every human being is worthy of that knowledge is to receive it mm. if in fact they can arrive at that place the one good thing I like about the uh, end of the movie of that, uh, what is it called, The Last Crusade, the Indiana Jones, mm -hmm. yeah. is brill brilliantly pointed out there because Big Ego Man thinks that the you know the cup of Jesus is going to be the one that's all the gems on it. Mm -hmm. Of course, he takes it and dies a horrible death, screaming wow. because he was wrong. <laughs> it's actually the little wooden cup, the, wooden cup, the yeah, plain one, right? right? Yeah. What are we being told in that story of the wo you know what is the wooden chalice? You know why is it wood? You see, there's a lot of we got whole things there. Hmm. So entering the future is like crossing a river in which you only have one you have two logs mm. and as you go you don't build a bridge but you take one log from behind you and put it in front mm -hmm. one log from behind you and put it in front mm. to get across the river this is what we're given mm. now the caesars want to build bridges but as you saw empires rise and fall mm. there's no stability in that <laughs> you only have the present moment you see and your experience from the past and where you're going so where are we going we are going towards our own spiritual awareness you cannot do that while you have parasitical, tyrannical individuals on your back. Mm. So the final answer to that question is this. There is a distinguishing characteristic about these vultures. Mm. There is a distinguishing characteristic that makes them the controllers and the rulers over you that you don't have that they do. Mm. You know what it is? No. Knowledge of history. Oh. <laughs> That's your answer. Hmm. The distinguishing thing that makes them have power over you is that they know where they've come from and they know about tradition and they know about culture and they've been suppressing it and sequestering it mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. my work is about to get you equally empowered yeah. because once you start learning looking over their shoulder you know then you start to get involved in what they're doing because knowledge you have to have knowledge of your opponent mm -hmm. if you don't know what makes these people tick then don't even bother trying to fight you might as well just put your head on the block mm -hmm. right <laughs> you've got to know what makes them tick mm -hmm. you got to do do something that they do look at the queen look at the coronation look at the pope look at the emphasis on regalia and history mm -hmm. yeah look at the emphasis on the egypt so yeah we're not writing you know at, uh, some you know spinner rack thing here for the mere you know edification of people uh, in the normal historical sense we're talking historical revision here mm -hmm. we're talking about trying to get you as empowered as the people who are controlling you so that you can take them apart at their own game mm -hmm. and you can you can see where, where it's going and you yeah. can pick up on uh, even uh, you know if, if, you, if you're familiar with history and, and, and what has been happening in the past 
you're you're more and more quickly are going to get up get up to speed, so to speak, at what is happening now and why yeah. the moves, you know, are why the world is moving in the yeah. direction where it's moving. You know, that's right, because they're leaving trails. They also uh, sort of advertise it in a sure. way, not so that your left brain will understand it, but these people are through their movies and advertisements and all sorts of ways through artwork are very happy to tell you where they're hitting and mm. what they're doing. Mm. They're giving you updates. That's but see, right. an illiterate person doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. It's just like never reading the highway code and getting into a car for a joyride. You're going to be crashing through every <laughs> red light. It's a matter you're going to find yourself up a tree, <laughs> you know, or on a ball of flame with 15 other people, you yeah. know, injured. This is the inevitable journey that is, oh, well, we don't know anything about the past. Let's just go for it. Uh, this uh, is this joyriding, you know, yeah. uh, moment that is very exhilarating, but you can, you know, what's, what's the and, point of living like that? And there is no ruling hand in history, you know. Yeah, it's, no it's, ruling it's, hand in history. Everything is a coincidence That's and right. things just pop up on the horizon, you know, it's no, no, no plan, no, because That's right. again, then you, then you go into the conspiratorial, you know, worldview, yeah. yeah. and then you're, you know. <laughs> but as Geo Griffin has said many times, tell me where there's not a conspiracy. That's right. He goes, when you sit and try to undermine a fellow businessman, or you you have a you uh, you have some feud with it just even family members that's a conspiracy right there yeah a couple of family members conspiring against other family members a mm -hmm. couple of businessmen trying to outdo another business or another businessman doesn't it happen on Wall Street every day doesn't it happen on the streets every day yeah. don't police try to conspire about how to crash a drug gang or something like that mm -hmm. well yeah. tell me where there's no conspiracy but again it's the same same problem yeah. Oh, we can't accept a west to east movement, but we have no qualm. We don't even question if it's east to west. <laughs> oh, we don't accept conspiracy, but of course it happens everywhere. Yeah. So what is wrong with the human brain? Again, it's that drip feeding. It's that slow indoctrinating policy. You know, you've gone to school. You've been taught by these institutions, mm -hmm. and we've been taught very well. So life happens to be an act of deconstruction. Yeah. True evolution, true discovery is you unraveling yourself like a kind of a Houdini from the webs of lies that have been put around you in your mind. Yeah. You know, okay, so if my you know work helps a person do that, fantastic, great. Yeah. That's not my motive, because I remember it's the efforts on the person's behalf. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you climb up the mountain and you start to see this panoply, I believe that you have an immediate passion to do something about it. Mm -hmm. In whatever way, there's different ways that people act mm -hmm. to do. Because when you see that there is this kind of a level of uh, manipulation, you know, at least I do. I feel very, very uh, compelled to do something about it. Oh, yeah. yeah in the same way that if I find some, you know, sort of like, a, I don't know, parasite in my house or something mm. like that. Mm. Yeah, you got to do something about it. And although everybody doesn't get out, you know, with a bullhorn or placards no, and protest, right. whatever, people yeah. do it, you know, in their own way. And I'm finding them all over the world. My yeah. work is dependent often on people sending me stuff from all over the world. Mm. People who say, yeah, yeah, I'm not interested in, you know, have a big name. I can barely talk to, about this to my mates, to my mm. friends. You know, mm. it's a bit of a darn side. But hey, I, I can send it to you. Here, look what I found. Yeah. You know, and they're researchers. These sure. are people. See, again, look at that. See, people take that for granted. Do you know how hard that was to do? Mm. <laughs> you know, in, in ages past, you didn't yeah. even have the access to anything. That's right. I mean, I can't emphasize this more. The level of, of uh, suppression is the only word, you know, for it, really. Yeah. And, and that's, that, that also shows that this is a process that have to come from within people themselves because the means are there and the information is there now in that sense there's so much <laughs> much out there and, and, if, and if people really are genuinely interested in in whatever you know oh they, but i think they can find out you know they can and i think they yeah. are yeah your radio show others i've been on you see the, the, you know the web i look at all of that and i have no problem with any of that i know even why we're living in a, a sort of a semi uh, a uranian age in which the technology itself has come aboard mm -hmm. i'm looking at it from that macro level mm -hmm. i'm even interested in why the technology has come about to broadcast this information mm -hmm. and i'll tell you why because a lie can never be forced to the ground forever <laughs> people have heard that been said from shakespeare onwards but they never really thought about it mm -hmm. it is a living fact that evil cannot win <laughs> it's just a it's, simple it's, fact it's finding a way to express itself in order to yeah. or find the means in order to right. express itself or you know let's put it this way just because you don't believe what i've said mm -hmm. doesn't make it any less true yeah th that's right I mean, a person may languish you know and may be all tied up in knots thinking oh my god evil's going to win that's your affair that's mm -hmm. what your story mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the facts the okay. fact is evil cannot win never has never will there's a homeostasis in the universe mm -hmm. this was uh, very much uh, Oh, it was uh, personified in an Egyptian goddess mm -hmm. by the name of Mayat. Mm -hmm. And her name and her glyph meant a half, like we would do 0.5 mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. half of something. Okay. Like a half, fraction. That's what her name meant. And it meant balance. She was she was the lady of the mirror. And basically, 
Also, her greatest symbol was the scales. You know those big mm -hmm. scales that you see where the soul is brought for judgment? Sure. And this, the, the priest of Matt really understood that everything is in perfect balance. Only your misunderstanding of that fact creates imbalance, hmm. which is the delusion mm -hmm. or a momentary aberration of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I've already pointed out in my earlier work where that aberration of consciousness comes from. Mm -hmm. It's from genetic interference and all mm -hmm. sorts of scientific malarkey, you know, messing with our DNA. Man became aberrant. His brain, his thinking became skewed and narrow, you see, and uh, very, very, very destructive, necrotic, in other words. And it's from that state that man has to evolve through, you know, finding his hygienicness mm -hmm. and from studying subjectual history and so on. But the darn side is that we have uh, let this go on for so long that now the most toxic of the people of the world are ruling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you deal with that in a homeopathic method as you would in a normal situation. You don't charge at them with swords anymore. You deal with it in a homeopathic way, which is strengthening your own immunity. Mm -hmm. That has many different uh, modalities to do that. It can involve lots of different things, but that's your game. That's your excitement. That's your own discovery. You go and find out what, you know, makes your work pleasurable. You know, for some people, it's healing. For others, it's numerology. Mm -hmm. For other guys, it's, you know, it's, it's uh, sacred geometry. For other people, it's, you art, know, studying music, the art, you know? music, <laughs> yeah. learning about the Bible codes, you know, or whatever, yeah. you know, or making a movie or something. Sure. You know, there's a hundred music. You're going to tell me that, you know, Frederick Handel didn't change the face of the planet by what he wrote in music? Of course mm -hmm. he did. <laughs> so there's 101 ways. That's the individual person. Mm. So we are dealing with a situation in which we are not going to, our, our evolution is being inhibited. So now you fall into two categories. You're a person who either does something about it or you live in that inhibited state. Mm. I really don't complain. You know, I'm not worried about those people who live in the inhibited state because those people have just made that choice. Mm. You see, even the Illuminati and these secret societies, I have no problem with them. They have the choice to do what they do, and you have to give them the choice. Mm -hmm. But they also give you the choice to do what you want. Mm -hmm. you, well, they have the right mm -hmm. to do whatever they want to do because that's an extension of who they are, right? Mm -hmm. But they could not do what they're doing if you didn't permit it. Yeah, the, that's right. <laughs> that's I mean, right. I mean we've said if it before. You, if you think about it in, in, right. in the long run. You gave so them think, yeah. the power. Sure. You gave them sure. because, first of all, these Druidic colleges was destroyed, the secret teachings of how a man could be strong in himself, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. It's all been lost. We have little elements of it here and there. But the great ways were lost. They were, they were eradicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And man has also lost his way existentially. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, he's able, he's able to be, you know, prayed over mm -hmm. very, very easily. But I believe that if you show a lot of people this fact, if you demonstrate to them that you are under control, you, your thinking is not your own, everything is borrowed, you are not yourself. I believe a lot of people have an inward, you know, very deep set uh, instinct to change that reality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I really do. I really believe that in, in the core of people, they don't want to be slaves. Yeah, it's unnatural course. to be <laughs> a slave. Course, yeah. They may get used to it and they may even forget that they are slaves. Exactly. Right. That the, and the, right. that's, this is important. That's <laughs> the new kind of aspect yes. to all of this. The, right. the, the, the invisible the, cage. Exactly. The you know the oh, I'm not scientific saying. dictatorship, as right. it were. You know, the people and don't discover this anymore. Which is why the establishment has been moving in that direction because they know that works. Mm -hmm. You can actually make people so sa satiated with a bunch of sensational rubbish. And in fact, you can. Uh, I'll extend that to say a sensational knowledge mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. You know, label reading. Yeah. Like I'm dabbling in this. Oh, I dabble in that. Yeah, I read. I read uh, Zachariah Sitchin, and I picked up a David Icke book. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm a bit of a dabbler. I listen to Alex Jones. You know, okay, wait a minute. Where are we where are we going with this? You know, it's like it's not really appli yeah. application yeah. Of, of of the information itself, but it's right. more like being knowledgeable about all right. the. Well, it's another bandwagon. It's another flavor of the month. You know, mm -hmm. I know many mm -hmm. people. In fact, most of the people that I know that I you know have come across in my life are, are dabblers just mm -hmm. like that. It's mm -hmm. just it's just something that you're going to do today, and then tomorrow they leave it. Sure. They have no real passion or interest in it at all. Hmm. But see, I'm not ever looking to all the people to do X, Y, Z. All the people are never going to do anything. Mm. I'm only looking to the people who have uh, changed their own ways and uh, who've understood these fundamentals and what change is really all about. Sure. You cannot change society. You can only change yourself. Once that's fully understood, mm. we have no problem. We have no qualm. Anyone who is imagine, who's running around doing political work is a fool. Anyone who's in any way doing anything in their life to change others mm. or to change the collective in a us and we kind of way way is a, yeah. is, a, is, a, is, a, is a suffering from that dementia that yeah. aberration yeah the only kind of change is personal change the I oh shit and but that's that so will, difficult yeah. you know <laughs> for, for many to, to get in that sense because it's, as you say it's always about what are we going to do about it what what right. you know we got as soon as you hear that you know a, there's a problem hmm. 
you know as soon as you hear that what are we or what are us mm. are going to do you know uh, them is we another gotta, extension of the thing or we got to set up um, you know unions of some oh, kind sure. or yeah. you know whatever another cult another sect sure. that they'll infiltrate in five minutes yeah. and sure. be back in the falling cabinet again under sure. lock and key yeah. you know I mean how, how easy you know if I was them it would be a laugh a joke you know, it's it's yeah. not a problem. And luckily, you know, there's people from within these cabals who have discovered this, mm. that they've been infiltrated, that they are not sustainable anymore. A lot mm. of these New Age cults, people from within are going, yeah, it's fake. It doesn't work. They've been infiltrated. It's not happening as we thought it was going to happen. Mm. I'm going to, you know, move out of here. And we're having a lot of people, you know, show more interest in, you know, our own work. Jim mm. Mars, you know, Jordan Maxwell, David Icke, you know, Alex Jones. We're getting more and more interest mm. For more and more people yeah. that used to be sort of you know caught before in webs of the new age crap you know and, and religious rubbish sure. you know they're starting to wake up and realize yeah this doesn't answer these questions hmm. it's it's more of a, actually a, it, it's more contradiction in a way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, every single day I get you know 200 emails and a great deal of them are saying man I feel so awakened you know I, I I'm, I've never felt like this before I'm mm -hmm. really seeing reality in a new way mm -hmm. well you're climbing the mountain you're getting a larger and larger perspective. But it is hard, and they'll they'll complain. You know, man, it's lonely, it's hard. I'm, I'm, I'm bruised knees. You know, sure. I'm just, I'm, but see, those are people who are exhilarated by the fact that they're seeing a, a greater and greater landscape, mm. and that is exhilarating. Mm. Just in the same way as you're climbing a physical mountain, you don't go back because there's no going back. Mm. And when you finally get to the top, you see you have a vision of both of all of it. Mm. You, you know, yeah, your territory is pretty small what you're standing on, but look at the what you see. You have a rare and unique vision of the whole of life hmm. and the whole of the meaning of life yeah. and the most important thing is when you arrive at the peak is you have not asked somebody else to bring you the mountain mm. yeah you haven't asked somebody else hey so what's this like <laughs> you know you're living beside the mountain you go hey, tell me all about it <laughs> yes, you know? and you have because yeah. today what we have is a world of people who don't want freedom or enlightenment they want people to give it to them mm. i'm just a voice who comes in and go hey hey hey, hey stop, stop 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 can you stop asking this guru this priest this teacher this this freaking general or this you know politician to give you something that mm. you can actually attain yourself mm -hmm. are you really interested in enlightenment or are you more interested in big daddy giving it to you mm. well i know what the answer is they're interested in big daddy giving it to them <laughs> this is what has to change mm. yeah you have a right aspiration it's good to aspire towards enlightenment yeah. but it's wrong to aspire to someone else to give it to you and once people realize that and utterly realize that ah, i see the workings of that in my own mind i'm going to stop that mm. I can ask people for physical, material things, for sexual things, no problem, that's fine. There's a normal interchange between human beings. But see, for psychological and spiritual reasons, mm -hmm. there ain't, there's no two people on that path. Mm -hmm. There's no room for the guru. Sure. You are the pharaoh, you are the priest, you are the sorcerer, you are the magician, you are the shaman, you are the teacher. You're the one who has to do it. <laughs> right. You're the one who has to walk that path.